The last thing I want to talk about regarding Roto is how to work. And we talked about extents and we talked about blocking, but something you can really do to help yourself is to work stabilized. The idea of extents and the idea of blocking, the biggest thing is we're having to compensate for both the movement of the object itself as well as the movement of the camera or the movement of the world. So what we want to do is we want to try and isolate those things out as much as we can. And a really good way to do that is to use a tracker node, you know, whether it's a 2D tracker or a 3D tracker or even a vector tracker to capture as much of that stuff that they're really good at capturing and remove that from the objects that we need to animate. So here's an example where we have this barn. It's a little bit of a panning shot. And what you would do traditionally is you would go to the first frame, say we want to roto out the barn, maybe to change its color or do something else with it. We'd set our key and then we would just step through. And as soon as our motion sort of changes directions, we're going to set another key and then we're going to keep going and see we it's moving a little bit. So we're going to set another key. And what we're doing is we're not really chasing animation of the house. We're actually compensating for the movement of the camera. So we'll go, we'll just keep moving this every time it sort of stops or dips or changes direction, add a little keyframe. Then we'll go back through and we can refine it as we go. See here, we changed a little. So you can see, you know, it's working. We're using, we're using those tenants that we talked about before, but there's a better way to do that. And a really good one is say to track this object. So we've put a track point on here. I've exported a match move and I've set it to invert, which makes it a stabilize. So here you can see our house is now pretty much stabilized and we could probably even stabilize this a little bit better. There's still a little rotation in here that we could probably pull out, but for what we're doing here, I think this will work pretty nicely. So now we'll go in, we'll set our roto shape on our first frame and then we'll start to tap through and you can see there's very little movement happening. You know, I think maybe we'll want to adjust it here and then we'll keep going. And you can see for the most part, we're having to do very little correction to our shape to make it work. And that's because the tracker is doing the lion's share of that work. So now, you know, we had what, five or six keyframes before 30 frames. Now we might only need three or four keyframes across the entire shot to animate what we need to animate. Now the way we would use that is we would take this match move, we would copy it, we would make sure that it's set back to match move and turn off the invert. And then we're applying that tracker to our roto shape. And then our that roto shape is masking out the piece we want to mask out. So now you can see our roto is moving. There's a lot of animation happening, but that animation is hand, being handled more procedurally by the tracker itself. And we're only having to do the roto for the delta. And we can put that back on top and say we want to gain this down or saturate it. Now you can see we've done some animation and we've done it really quickly. Again, we really want to eliminate as many keyframes as we possibly can using whatever means necessary. So if that means using trackers, 3D trackers, definitely explore that. Here's a little more complicated scene. So here we have both parallax and camera movement happening all at the same time. Say we wanted to roto out just this sign. And this works well for soft body things as well. Say you have a person, you know, instead of a sign, if that was a person doing jumping jacks, we would track the rocks. We would stabilize around that person so that the only animation we're dealing with is that person's animation. We want to pull as much of the camera and world movement out as physically possible. You can also use 3D camera tracking and UV stabilization to do this as well. That's a really, really effective way to reduce your number of roto keyframes and create really, really organic, smooth roto. So we have the same thing here. We've gone and tracked this shot. So we have two track points in the corners, and then we're outputting a match move and a stabilized transform. So in this case, we're going to look at our stabilized transform. And you can see we're not fully stable, but we're much more stable. And what we're doing is we're really reducing the number of keyframes we're going to have to create here. You know, same problem. So if we were working on this natively, we would start with our roto shape here and then 
we would be setting a keyframe basically every two or three frames for the entire length of the shot. And they are fairly aggressive in terms of how much they're moving. If you scrub through here versus our original, you can see we're really moving a lot. So you have to take great care to really make sure you get everything positioned in the right spot so that you don't feel that roto shaking against your footage. Now if we're working stabilized, you'll see we start in the same spot. And yeah, there's definitely some movement, but here you can see we're really maybe, what, 15 frames in before we have to make any kind of real adjustment. And here we have a couple frames where we'd probably need to keyframe every couple frames to get through that little wobble. But we're basically reducing our number of keyframes considerably. And by putting it in this space, everything becomes a little more organic and it's less based on the scale of the camera and more on the scale of the object. So that's really the last big thing on Roto. When you're rotoing, you really want to look at everything holistically and see exactly what you're dealing with before you start to get nuts. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of people, and I've done it myself, where I start rotoing and then I get halfway through the shot or three quarters through the shot and realize that I really should have approached it a different way because something changes in the footage later down the road.